In this video, I'm going to be talking about the PMOS device output characteristics. One thing I've seen a lot in textbooks is that they'll talk about the NMOS device characteristics, go into a bunch of detail, and then for the PMOS device, they'll just say multiply all the terminal voltages by minus one and all the currents by minus one, and that's the PMOS device. And that shouldn't be good enough for us. We need to sit down and we need to think about what that actually means. So here's my PMOS device, and let's talk about what's happening here. So I'm going to label my gate and my source of my drain. And unlike what the books do, I think it's helpful for us to actually think about the same node voltages that we talked about in the NMOS device. So let's not flip it around and multiply by minus one. Let's say that VGS, VGS is this voltage. One thing that you'll see is they'll say, we're going to actually call it VSG, and they're, that's, that's basically saying multiplying by minus one, right? So this is the voltage at the source minus the voltage at the gate. We're not going to do that today. We're just going to say, let's use the same nomenclature we've been using for the MOS device. So this is VGS, and this is v VDS, okay? And I do this just because I think it is helpful when you're trying to figure out what's going on to keep some level of consistency as you're developing the intuition behind how these things work. So let's draw the PMOS cross section. Again, we want to be able to visualize what's happening in the device as we're applying different voltages to the terminals. So the PMOS device lives in N minus silicon. Remember, this is lightly doped um, N type material. So it has electrons that are free to move around. And the source and drain regions are P plus, meaning heavily doped regions that have a lot of extra holes that are available to move around. I've got this thin layer of silicon dioxide, that's my dielectric, and then I have my thick polysilicon gate. And so here's my gate, here's my source, and here's my drain. Now in another video I talked about the body bias for the NMOS and PMOS transistors. And so in this video I am going to label my body. The body of the device is here, and it's going to be tied to the highest potential, VDD. And the reason for this is that we want to keep these two PN junctions, this junction right here and this junction right here, we want to keep them reverse biased so that current's going to flow between the source and the drain and not anywhere else. Current's not going to flow from the drain to the body or from the source to the body. So that is the reason that the body is biased. Now because the source can be at a different potential than the drain, and actually, by the way, I'm going to include this body connection, I'll just label it VDD. So we do have a four terminal device. So because the source can be at a different potential than the body, this device is bidirectional, meaning that which side is the source and which side is the drain depends only on the voltages that I apply to the terminals. So if I were to apply a higher voltage to this side, it is the source and this is the drain. But if I were to apply a higher voltage to this side, then this would become the source and this would become the drain. Okay. So let's draw the ID VDS characteristics for this device. And I'm going to try to do <laughs> I'm going to try to do a good job, but it's looking a little bad already. <laughs> okay. So this is my ID and here's VDS. Okay. And we're going to sweep from 0 to um, VDD. Actually, this is minus VDD. So let's, just like we connected the source when we were talking about the NMOS device in the first video I posted, just like we connected the source of the NMOS device to the lowest potential, we connected it to ground, we're actually going to connect the source of the PMOS to the highest potential. So we're going to connect it to VDD. So this is now connected to VDD. We've got our body connected. And now what we're going to do is we're going to keep the gate biased as high as possible. So VG is actually going to equal VD. And what that means is that VGS equals zero. So this is the exact same way that we started out for the NMOS device characteristics. We said VGS equals zero. And we did that here by setting VG equal to VDD. And VS is equal to VDD. Okay, and now what we're going to do is we're going to sweep VD. Okay. I'm going to write all this because I think this one is a little bit trickier to understand than the NMOS. So I'm going to take it a little bit slower. Um, so we're going to sweep VD from VDD to zero. Okay. And if you think about that, what that means is we start here, right? We move right along this X axis right here. The reason that ID equals zero for this case 
is because Vg minus Vs is equal to zero. So this transistor is not on. Remember, if there is no applied gate voltage here, there's no current flowing in this device because the, the resistance between these two, the source and the drain nodes, is like 10 to the 12 ohms. It's, it's really big. So there's not going to be current flowing here unless we've applied this gate voltage. Okay, so in that case, it doesn't matter how big we make the difference between VDS. This is still an open switch, just like the NMOS case. So now we're at, we're at this operating point right here. VDS is as big as it can possibly be. VS is equal to VDD, and VD is equal to ground. Okay, so now VDS is as big as it can possibly be, and now we're going to try to turn on this MOSFET. We're going to change the gate voltage so that we're inducing a channel to form between the source and the drain. And how do we do that? Remember, our goal here was to invert the region directly under the gate so it no longer looks like it's this N-type material. It's going to look like it's P-type. And we're going to do that by applying a lower voltage to this gate. And the reason for that is because our body is biased at VDD, right? So when we apply um, a VG that's lower than VDD by the threshold voltage, what we can do is we're going to repel the negative charge carriers, the electrons that are underneath this gate, and we're going to uncover these fixed positive ions under here. And now what we have is we have a channel where current can flow between the source and the drain. And that is going to now, the ID versus VD characteristic is now going to look like this. And this is for, we're going to call this VGS1. Okay, this should look like just the opposite if this were my ID VDS characteristic for the NMOS device. I'm calling this a positive VDS, right? This is just, this is just flipped, right? Okay, it should look flipped. I'm just not a, not that great at drawing. Okay, so what's happening here? So now that we've turned on this MOSFET, we move from this operating point over to here. And now what's happening is we have current flowing from the source to the drain, right? We've got current flowing from the source to the drain. Now this looks a little bit crazy, but in the books you can see why they do VSD, that, because that shows you that the current's going from the source to the drain. Um, that's, that's why they do it, but... Okay, so I've removed the plus and minus uh, VDS designation right here, just so you don't get confused when you're thinking about how the current's flowing, because the current always flows from the high side to the low side. So in this case, we're, we're getting current from the source and it's going into the drain, and what it's gonna do is it's gonna charge up this drain node. It's gonna bring it closer and closer to VDD. Now what does that mean for this curve right here? What that means is the difference between the source and the drain voltage, VDS, is gonna get smaller and smaller and smaller. And as it gets smaller and smaller and smaller, we're going to move along this line right here until at some point there's no more difference between the source and the drain voltage and there's no current flowing. And when this happens, we have a closed switch. We have the source and the drain being equal voltages. And this is for VGS, VGS1. So this is the case where VG is lower than VDD by the threshold voltage of this transistor. And so what happened is as soon as we turned the gate voltage on enough to turn on this MOSFET, the drain was pulled all the way up to VDD. And now you can draw this for other VGS values, so VGS2, VGS2, just like we did for the NMOS device. And, and you would go through the same thing. You would have a higher gate voltage initially, right? So we jump up to this operating point. And now the current flowing through from the source to the drain would charge up the drain node. You'd move along this curve right here until some point there was no current flowing. And there's no difference between the source and the drain voltage. And now you've got a closed switch. So hopefully this gave you a little bit of intuition for how the PMOS device is behaving. Now the reason that we care about this is that we're going to put this PMOS device in with some with an NMOS device or with many NMOS devices and we want to be able to have an intuition for how those circuits are going to behave because we're going to try to create some logic with them. We're going to try to build some basic gates like inverters, NAND, and OR gates 
And so to know how the current is going to respond and how these node voltages are going to get pulled up or pulled down when we turn on and off the gates is really super helpful.